Hello and welcome to another episode of me reading AI dungeon stories that I did in the past. Uh, I meant to do them more often, but I kind of got like uh, turned off of it and didn't think anybody would care and lack of confidence and whatever. But whatever, it's been a it's been a while since I did a video, so I'm gonna try and do another video. And I think I have AI Dungeon all lined up where I left off the last time. So let's just jump right into it. Uh, we left off February 18th. Uh, and I had done a couple different uh, stories. And now we'll just jump into the next one. So... Let's hit it. Yeah, so here it is here. All right, you are Luke Davidson, which is me. In a dream, you are learning to control. You can feel the power of your mind, but it is not enough to control this beast. I have no idea what I am doing. Fall asleep. You lie down on the bed and close your eyes. You hear the noise outside, but you don't care about that right now. All you want to do, all you want to do is sleep. You can't dream if you don't sleep. You get up from the bed and head towards the door. You open it and see nothing out there. The sun is complete. The sun has set completely, so you know it's time for you to go home. Luke decides he'll play the game until it's time to charge his phone. <laughs> You walk back into the room where you left Luke and put him down. He looks at you with concern but doesn't say anything. Are we going to be able to make it, he asks. We'll figure something out. I can always play tomorrow. You leave Luke and head back to your room. You lay down on your bed and try and relax. It isn't working, though, because you can still feel the monsters outside. They are just cats. You begin to wonder if these things aren't just some random cats you've been seeing around town. They're all running away from something or another, so why should they be any different? The next day comes and goes without any incident. Luke has a boring life. After a few hours of lying here, you decide to call it a night. You haven't slept since yesterday morning when you first woke up in the house. You think about calling Luke back, but then again, you never really had much reason to anyway. Keep your mind and relationships together, brother. You turn off your phone and return to your room. You look through your phone and see that you haven't missed anything important. There was a text from Luke earlier today, but he didn't answer it. It's in mind control conspiracy. You sit down on your bed and begin to meditate. You focus on your breathing and let yourself drift off. A few minutes later, you awaken from meditation. Your phone is sitting beside you as usual, but its screen is blacked out. I can meditate. You quickly check your surroundings and find that everything is normal. You have no idea what could have happened to your phone, but you assume it must be broken somehow. You continue to meditate and eventually fall asleep. Well, we know my phone is going to die soon. You wake up early tomorrow morning and realize that you won't be able to use your phone anymore. This means you need to figure out how to fix it before someone else does. Don't worry about it because you are Luke Davidson. You get up and start looking for a repair shop near your home. Eventually you find one that seems like it might work. The guy who works there is very nice, but not exactly the most knowledgeable about electronics. It's just the beginning of something beautiful. You spend an hour trying to fix your phone while listening to music on your iPod Touch. Finally, after a couple tries, you succeed. You put your phone back into its case and take it with you as usual. You hear a knock at the door and go over to answer it. We have to go back to our own prisons. You open the door and find yourself staring at a man dressed in black in front of you. He looks familiar, though, but you can't place him right now. Luke, you say nervously, I'm sorry I couldn't help. It's all right. Keep trying. So you're, you pause and try to remember his face. The owner of this place? Yes, yes I am. Well, I'm glad you helped me. Now where did you come from? Why are you wearing all black? Funeral services. He smiles and nods. This is my business partner, Mr. Gannon. What do you mean by that name, you ask suspiciously. Mr. Gannon is my real name, but we prefer to call each other friends instead, he explains. Gannon. All right, so why are you here anyway? We wanted to invite you to our funeral services. Oh, well, I guess that makes sense. So what's the service like then? 
I'm not going to die. It's going to be a simple ceremony. We'll send you off with some flowers and a card. A card, you ask incredulous, incredulously? Yeah, it's just like when you were alive, except without any pictures or anything. Realize you are dead. No, 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 that was different, you exclaim. Okay, okay, calm down, it's fine. How could it possibly be fine if I'm dead, you shout angrily, because you're not really dead yet. Instead, he said I could be a little boy. That's not true. I died once before. Then how come you're still around? Because I'm a little boy. Little boy? Are you kidding me? What kind of sick joke is that? I want to be innocent again. I don't think you understand. I'm not dead because I've been playing games with you. I actually am dead, but there's nothing wrong with that. But you look so peaceful and happy for someone who's dead. How can you be so sad about something like that? I'm not sad. I'm angry. I know exactly what happened to me. And I lost my parents when I was very young. Batman. You must have a difficult childhood. Did you, did you lose your parents too? Not in the same way. They were both killed by Batman. My mother was murdered while she slept and my father was beaten to death after he left home. That's horrible. Well, I suppose it wasn't all bad. At least my dad didn't beat me nearly as much as Batman did. Batman, you say in surprise? Yes, Batman. The man who has saved Gotham City more than anyone else in history. If I'm going to die for you, I will never hear you again. What do you mean? If we ever meet again, I promise that I won't let myself hear your voice again. Wait, you can't mean erase the nightmares. What the hell are you talking about? My name is Damien Dark. I'm your ancestor. Whoa, hold on there. You're not my great-great-grandfather. End the story. Damien Dark smiles at you, and then suddenly his smile disappears from his face. He looks extremely upset. Oh my god, I thought you were dead. I am dead, but I'm alive inside your head right now. So what does that mean? I'm dead in another reality. No, 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 no. That's impossible. It couldn't happen. It can if you tell me where your body is. Luke doubts about his mind. I don't believe you. You're lying. That's why I need to tell you where your body is. Where? Where would that be? In the Batcave, of course. The Batcave? You must be the Joker. Look, I don't know anything about you or your family, but I swear to God, if you're telling the truth, then your ancestors' bodies should be in the Batcave. Now come out and show me where they are. I can get some rest. Damien Dark walks away with a sad look on his face. You close your eyes and try to fall asleep. Suddenly you feel like someone is watching you. You open your eyes and see Damien Dark standing over you. Come on, wake up. Phone gonna die soon anyway. You quickly grab your cell phone and answer it. Hello? Hey Damien, how are you doing today? A familiar female voice answers back. How old are you exactly? 23, you reply. I am 31. Good, good, good to hear. So how did you find out about me? Well, I was just rambling, calling around, and one day when I answered the phone, it said, hello. So I hung up thinking nothing happened until yesterday. We are not alone. Yeah, I've been wondering about you too. What do you want to talk about? Nothing much, really. I guess I just wanted to say thanks for saving my life last night. Thanks for what? You saved the world just by breathing. Um, well, yeah, I saved your life, and I think we both could have used a little help after all. Really? You saved my life? Yes, actually, but before we go any further, I think it's time for bed. What is it? Just something important. I'm going to have to leave though. now, though. Okay, okay, just let me pack up my stuff, and I'll meet you tomorrow at the bar. Damien hangs up and sighs deeply. Good night. Good night, Damien, you say as he leaves. You sit down on your couch and immediately fall asleep. Game over. The next morning you wake up and realize that Damien has left. You call him back on the phone, but he doesn't pick up. You start to panic and begin searching everywhere for him. Eventually you give up and head home. And that's the end of that story. So, Batman killed my parents. <laughs> so Batman's the bad guy in this story, I guess. Somebody named Damien Dark. Kind of a cool name. Uh, Alright, well, that was one story and it's only 10 minutes, so might as well jump into another one. <sighs> you are Luke Davidson, a person who battles with schizophrenia and had to keep reality in check. You've been living on the streets for years. You know what it is like to be hungry and cold. 
The world has changed so much since your childhood, and you don't even recognize it anymore. Beg for some money. I need some food. I can't go on like this. The man looks at you as if he expects you to just give him all your money. He doesn't say anything else, though. He just walks away from you. Beg for food. Please, sir, I'll do anything. He stares back at you and then turns around and leaves without saying another word. It's not long before you get a few coins from one of the other beggars. You walk off feeling better than when you started. Buy some food. You spend the rest of the day eating and drinking beer. You're sure that you've earned yourself enough money to eat well tonight. After a couple days pass, you feel like you need more alcohol to help you sleep. Quit alcohol. You decide to stop drinking alcohol completely. You think about how you used to drink it every once in a while, but now you don't want to deal with the hassle of getting up early or having to find somewhere they sell booze. Get a job. You look around and see that there isn't any work available, so you decide to try and get a job at a bar. You figure if you can make enough money, maybe you could afford to live again. You head over to the nearest tavern and ask them for a job. Ask nicely for a job. They seem surprised by your request, but they agree to let you in. They tell you that they only hire people who have no criminal records and that they will also require proof of identification. You head into tavern and sit down at a table near the door. Show that you have no criminal record. You stand up straight and hold out your hand towards the bartender. He takes it and smiles at you. So are you looking for a job, he asks. Yes, you reply. I'm here to apply for a job. Apply for a job. You explain your situation and why you'd be a good employee. The bartender seems very interested in you. Well, I guess we could start by getting to know each other because I'm sure you're going to need my help. Thanks, you reply. Open up to the bartender. The bartender talk, starts talking to you about his life and what he does. He tells you that he has been working here for several years and is always friendly with everyone. Eventually, the conversation goes a little deeper than just bartending. Listen to the bartender. As the two of you talk, you begin to notice things about him. He mentions that he was born in a small town called Middletown. Sounds like it might be an area close to your hometown. Do you remember anything about your past life? No. Oh, the bartender says, well, then I guess I'll never know what happened to you. But I do hope you find happiness in whatever path you choose. He walks away from you as soon as he finishes speaking. Start your new job. You go back to your old job and continue doing it until one day you finally get fired. When you walk in the front door, the owner looks at you with disgust. What's wrong? Are you sick? Do you have some sort of disease? I'm schizophrenic. I'm schizophrenic, you exclaim. The owner stares at you for a moment before replying, Yeah, I've heard that one before. You're lucky this place didn't fire you on the spot. Accept your fate. You quickly leave the bar and head home. You don't sleep well that night, but eventually you fall asleep. The next morning, you wake up feeling strange. Your stomach hurts and you feel nauseous. Throw up. You rush in the bathroom and vomit all over yourself. You try to wash it off, but you can't move or speak properly. Then suddenly, you hear a voice in your head. Hey, kid, wake up. This isn't funny anymore. What? I am awake. Yes, you are awake. Why are you throwing up? What's wrong? Nothing's wrong. Just nothing. I forgot I was in a game. It's not very fun. That's because you're playing a video game right now. The world is ending. There will be no more games after this. You shake your head. It doesn't matter if there won't be any more games. I still need to survive this horrible situation. Realize you have powers. Suddenly you feel a surge of energy run through your body. Suddenly you feel a surge of energy run through your body. You scream out in pain and collapse onto the floor. This is weird. I'm sorry. I can't control this world. I can't control this world. You look around and see... Other people like you lying on the ground, they're also screaming and dying. This is scary. This is scary. You look around and see other people like you lying on the ground, they're also screaming and dying. Don't worry about me, I'll make it through this. Survive. A few hours later, you wake up from another m nightmare. You sit up slowly and then stand back up. I'm okay, it was just a nightmare. A few days pass and you find yourself having nightmares every once in a while. One day you wake up with an idea for a new game you could play together. You decide to call it Survival. Play Survival. The first night you don't get much sleep. By the third night you've got so scared that you start crying. Your parents come home one day and ask what's wrong. We have to leave soon. Take medication. No, we can't go yet. We have to stay here until the end of time. Your mother looks at you sadly. Well, I suppose we should give it some thought. Hug your mother. I love you, Mommy. 
She hugs you tightly and says she loves you too. Accept the protection of your mother's love. After several more nights of crying, you finally fall asleep. The next morning, you wake up with a headache. You look over at your computer and see that it's been hacked by someone else. Hacked? You hear a voice coming from the computer. Listen to the voice. Hello, who are you? You turn off your computer and try to calm down. Who are you? I'm from another reality. I'm playing a game on my phone and it controls your reality. What kind of game is it? You tell him. He tells you to wait while he logs on. A few minutes pass and you see his face change into that of a man who looks very familiar. It's me, the madman. Yes, it's me, the madman from our reality. Wait, why did you do this? He explains how he had no choice but to hack your world because there were too many threats out there. How can I help? I need you to protect me from the other threats. I'll explain everything later when we're closer to each other. You nod and agree. After a couple hours, he returns. I found the madman. Good job. Now let's get back to my house where I can show you all my inventions. You follow him as he takes you through a maze of corridors and rooms filled with strange machines. So why am I so important to you? Because I want to be close to you in case something happens to me. If you die, then I don't lose anything. You smile and nod. He continues walking ahead and eventually leads you back home. You died. Game over. Load previous save file. You load your previous save file and find yourself back in the same place. Oh good, you made it back. That was weird. Why did I die? Well, I guess you died because you got killed by the madman. You shake your head. No, it wasn't like that. It was just a coincidence that I died after getting saved by the madman. He laughs and nods. You died. Game over. Load previous save file. You load your previous save file and find yourself back in the same place. Oh good, you made it back. Stop killing me. Ha ha, sorry about that, but seriously, if you stop killing me, then I won't kill anyone else anymore. You continue onward, eventually you reach a large room full of machinery and computers. So what do you want to show me? This is my lab, I have all kinds of devices here that are going to change the way we live forever. You look around and see a lot of different things. There's, there's a large machine with glowing lights on top, which looks very complicated. Examine the machine. You inspect the machine and notice how complex it is. What does this do, you ask? The mad scientist smiles at you and points to some buttons on his console. You press one button and a small door opens up behind you. Go through the door. You walk into the room and see a big metal door. The mad scientist presses another button and the door slides open revealing an elevator. Now I'm going to take you down to my basement where I'll show you everything. Ride the elevator to the basement. You press the button for the elevator and wait patiently as it slowly ascends towards the ground floor. Suddenly you hear a loud noise from above. I think there's someone upstairs, you say to yourself. Suddenly you feel a sharp pain shoot through your chest. Not this again. You quickly turn around and run out of the room. As soon as you exit, you feel a sudden pain shoot through your body. No! Resist the fear. You quickly put your hands over your mouth and scream as loud as you can. Please don't let him hurt me. As you try to fight off the fear, you suddenly feel a burning sensation throughout your entire body. You begin coughing blood and fall unconscious. Great. A few hours later, you wake up. You're lying on a bed in a hospital room. A nurse comes walking in carrying a tray of food and drinks. She gives you some water before leaving you alone. Drink the water. You grab the glass bottle of water and start drinking it. It tastes horrible, but you know you need to keep hydrated. After gulping down half the bottle, you realize there isn't enough left in it for more than a couple of days. Don't worry, you are immortal. You continue to drink the water until you're sure that there won't be any more left. Then you sit up and wipe your face dry. Well, I guess I am now. You stand up and leave the room. You find yourself in a hallway. You take, you take a left and continue down. You head down a long corridor. Soon come across a large group of people. They look like they've been here a while. And they're all dressed in the same uniform. There are also several guards patrolling the area. Blend in. You decide not to draw attention to yourself by changing clothes or anything similar. Instead, you just pretend to be one of them. After about 10 minutes of walking down the hallways, you finally reach a door with a number on it. Read the number. The door opens up into a small office. The first thing you see is a man sitting in his desk writing something on a piece of paper. He looks up when he sees you standing there, but doesn't react to your presence. Hello, he says to himself. Hi, I'm Luke. He seems to pay more attention to you than he does to that, what he's writing. I'm here about my brother. He was killed recently. 
The man looks up from the paper and nods slightly. He then turns back towards you. Can I go back in time and save him? He shakes his head slowly. No, that would be too dangerous. I don't think you could do it anyway. You nod in agreement and walk out of the room. As soon as you exit, you hear a knock on the door behind you. Answer the door. You open the door and step inside. In front of you stands a young woman wearing a lab coat. Her hair is tied back in a ponytail and she has a dark circles under her eyes. She wears glasses which make her eyes appear even smaller than they already are. Hello. She smiles at you and walks over to you. It's good to meet you. My name is Linda. You smile back at her and shake her hand. So what am I doing here, Linda? Oh, you know, you're here for your brother, right? Well, we have some things to discuss. Linda begins to explain how she came to be working at this facility. It seems that her brother died recently and she's trying to figure out why. Someone killed my brother too. Linda frowns at you. That can't be true. How could someone kill your brother? You shake your head. No, I mean, my brother isn't dead. He's just gone missing. Tell her the truth. Linda looks at you like you've just committed a crime. What? What did you say? You look around nervously. There's no way to get out of this conversation without getting fired. You quickly try to come up with an excuse. Apparently, you can't handle the truth. Linda looks at you again. Really? Is that all you got? Are you really so afraid of me? You shake your head. I know this is just a game. Linda looks at you with disappointment. A game? A game? Really? This is supposed to be fun? You shake your head again. The two of you stare each other down until one of you breaks eye contact and leaves the room. Who left the room? The door opens up and another man steps into the room. His face is covered by a white lab coat. He's short, balding, and dressed in jeans and a t-shirt. He walks over to you and stares at you for several minutes before speaking to you. Listen to what he has to say. He speaks slowly as if he's reading off a script. My name is David and I'm currently on shift duty. If you need anything, please let me know. You nod at him and continue talk, walking towards the elevator. David? He turns his head slightly and sees you. He doesn't respond immediately, but after a few seconds, he does. Hey, it's nice to finally meet you. You wave at him and walk past him towards the elevator. Are you Legion? He nods back at you. Yeah, I guess so. You wave once more and enter the elevator. What's the point of all this? He smiles at you and continues walking ahead of you. You follow behind him. As soon as the elevator door opens up, they both turn their heads to watch you enter them. They're obviously waiting for something from you. Sorry, got distracted by reality. What were we doing? He shrugs, shrugs at you and continues walking ahead of you. You follow behind him. As soon as the elevator doors open up, they both turn their heads to watch you enter them. They're obviously waiting for something from you. We are stuck in a loop. As soon as the elevator door closes, he turns around and begins following you. You don't see him anymore after that. We are out of the loop. We look around and see nothing except empty rooms and corridors. Well, this is boring. You stop moving forward and just stand there looking at your surroundings. The only thing that catches your eye is a large metal door with an arrow pointing to it on the wall of one of the rooms. It looks like someone used to hang po posters or pictures here when you were younger. I don't know what to do. You decide to leave this room and go explore some other ones. You start heading down the hallways until you find another hallway that goes straight ahead. This seems like a good place to try something new. He was the first person to win the game. You continue walking forward until you reach a large metal door with an arrow pointing to it on the wall of one of the rooms. It looks like someone used to hang posters or pictures here when you were younger. The next room has two beds in it and a small table against one side. Get into bed. You walk over to the bed and sit down on it. You hear a faint noise and then feel cold hands grab onto your arms. It feels odd, but you manage to push it off of you before falling asleep. Dream about an island in the sky. You wake up feeling very sleepy. Quickly realize that you've been dreaming about an island in the sky. There isn't anything special about it though, so you ignore it and fall back to sleep again. Dream about the madman. You wake up feeling very sleepy again. You quickly realize that you've been dreaming about the madman. There isn't anything special about it, so you ignore it and fall back to sleep once more. Dream about time travel. You wake up feeling very sleepy again. You quickly realize that you've been dreaming about time travel. There isn't anything special about it, so you ignore it and fall back to sleep once more dream about sleeping you wake, wake up feeling very sleepy again you quickly realize that you've been dreaming about sleeping there isn't anything special about it either so you ignore it and fall back to sleep once more 
We were stuck in a sleeping loop. You wake up feeling very sleepy again. You quickly realize that you've been dreaming about saying we are stuck in a sleeping loop, which makes you laugh out loud. However, the fact remains that you have been doing this for years and never thought to actually do something different until now. Stay awake. You wake up feeling very sleepy again. You quickly realize that you've been dreaming about staying awake for a long time and not being able to move at all. However, the fact remains that you've been doing this for years and never thought to actually do something different until now. Get out of bed. You wake up feeling very sleepy again. It's a trap. You wake up feeling very sleepy again. You wake up feeling very sleepy again. You wake up feeling very sleepy again. You wake up fe feeling very sleepy again. The next day, this is hell. You wake up feeling very sleepy again. The fact remains that you've been dreaming about waking up in a strange place with no memory of how you got there or what happened before then. Remember that you were in a game created by artificial intelligence. You wake up feeling very sleepy again. The fact remains that you've been dreaming about remembering that you're in a game created by artificial intelligence. The next day, break the loop. You wake up feeling very sleepy again. The fact remains that you've been dreaming about breaking the loop and realizing that this is hell. The next day, the following morning, you awaken from your nightmare with a start as you suddenly realize who you are and where you are. Luke sits on his bed in reality. He hears his niece talking on the phone, but it's distorted. It, it trips him out. You wake up from your nightmare with a start as you suddenly realize who you are and where you are. You wake up from your nightmare with a start as you suddenly realize who you are and where you are. The next day, the following morning. This is just a bizarre game. You wake up from your nightmare with a start as you suddenly realize who you are and where you are. You wake up from your nightmare with a start as you suddenly realize who you are and where you are. Find a way out. You wake up from your nightmare with a start as you suddenly realize who you are and where you are. You wake up from your nightmare with a start as you suddenly realize who you are and where you are. The next day, the following morning, the following day. This is an endless nightmare. You awake to find yourself in another dream world. However, this one has changed quite a bit since the last time you were here. There is now a lot more activity going around the house. Your sister has apparently gone missing. This will drive me crazy. You wake up and find yourself in another dream world. However, this one has changed quite a bit since the last time you were here. There is now a lot more activity going around this house. Your sister has apparently gone missing. Find your sister. You wake up and find yourself in another dream world. However, this one has changed quite a bit since the last time you were here. There's now a lot more activity going around the house. Your sister has apparently gone missing. The next day, the following day, investigate. You wake up to find yourself in another dream world. However, this one has changed quite a bit since the last time you were here. This now, There's now a lot more activity going on around the house. Sister has apparently gone missing. And it looks like at that point, I got sick of the friggin' loop that it gets stuck in. And I quit. I don't know how I had the patience to play this game, man. But, uh, I think I'm gonna cut this episode short. Um, my other episodes have been like an hour long, but I don't feel like reading another one. So, I guess that's it. Uh, thanks for checking it out, and I hope you have a great day. Alright, bye.